Hey everybody, Korakan Nala here, and I don't normally review short films. Uh, I like to support short films and independent films. That's why you see me do reactions for trailers for them sometimes, or I'll give a shout out, or I'll repost them on like my social medias and things like that. And I like to support independent films, but I don't normally review them. However, I got a comment from Arvind. Gupta asking hey are you gonna have any plans to watch carbon and I said sure I'll watch it but I'm not gonna review it you know I'll check it out but it was so good that I felt the need to talk about it on video <laughs> so I wanted to go over some of the stuff in this uh, short film first off you know I like the concept the idea of pollution is getting so bad that we can't breathe the atmosphere anymore and that there's colonists on Mars. One of the things about a good sci-fi is you base it in a little bit of reality, at least a bit, just to give it some kind of grounding so that uh, the audience believes it more. It gives a better impact. And the fact that our pollution is getting crazy, is crazy right now, that we don't see very proactive plans to really solve the problem. The idea of the same corporations and companies that created the pollution in the first place is taking advantage of that fact to sell oxygen for what they say is trillions of dollars per year industry, which also shows the inflation of money is great because it's very believable we're heading in that direction as we speak and uh, it makes total sense that there would be an underground almost drug supply of oxygen an illegal supply just like in the United States we had uh, alcohol was illegal in the 1930s 20s and 30s that it created an illegal bootleg of alcohol. That's where the mob was started and created. So it makes perfect sense. And I like that grounding in the sci-fi. What I also like is in the first frame of this short film, you have TIE fighters from Star Wars. <laughs> I don't know how many people noticed that, but uh, right there in the top left corner, you can see a TIE Avenger, which uh, there really hasn't been very many pictures of them. They came from the books, but it looks just like a TIE Avenger, how it's explained. And Lego has a toy that's based off of that TIE fighter, that TIE Avenger. And so you know, kind of know what it looks like, but... There hasn't really been an on-screen representation of it that I can remember. And then very little over what would be considered China, you see a regular TIE fighter. It looks like uh, Darth Vader's TIE fighter. And then sprinkled around, I think, uh, what would be considered South Korea is another TIE fighter, but they're kind of sprinkled around all over the place as if we had a battle with the Empire. I like that. It's a very nice little nerd nod to Star Wars fans. Uh, I'm sure they obviously did it on purpose, but I wonder how many people actually noticed that. It was one of the things that popped out at me and I was like, oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so it, it it got me from the very beginning. I was like, okay, I can be down with this. I want to know where they're going with it. You know, I, I love the fact that they're going with the pollution storyline. It's a simple and easy story for a short film because you need simple and sto simple storylines for short films. Otherwise, your film's going to be too convoluted and long and you can't fit it within like a 20 minute or a half an hour time span. So it's a very simple and easy but very smart grounded storyline and I love that 
Now the explanation in the beginning I think is a little too long. It took us, you know, they were explaining it for a very long time. We didn't even get to the title of the film until now, which is like three minutes in, which isn't too bad. But for a short film, three minutes out of 25, that's too long for an intro. I don't think you needed to have that much explanation. Just the very beginning of saying that, you know, the planet becomes polluted. You have that intro visual effect and then just mentioning that very quickly that uh, everybody has to wear gas masks to breathe. You don't need to mention the mob. You don't need to mention the illegal transportation of oxygen because they talk about it in the short film. So once you start the short film, that's obvious. You, it feels like they mentioned it twice and it's not needed. You could have spent that time on something else. But I like the look of it. You know, it doesn't need to be expensive looking. Again, it's a short film. It doesn't need a lot of flash. The, the muted colors, uh, the, the very dark like greens and gritty feel to it. I really like the visuals of it. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to say is it has nothing to do with the short film itself. But the subtitles, I very much appreciate the subtitles. Otherwise, uh, I would still understand the movie, but I wouldn't get some of the nuances. But the subtitles go by too fast. There's some moments where I had to pause it just so I could read it because it would be two lines of subtitles and it would flash up and go away. Even though the person is not, not talking, for those bigger... Uh, subtitles you need to keep them up a bit longer so people can actually read the entire thing like I consider myself a somewhat fast reader especially for subtitles just because I have to be and I've gotten used to reading subtitles even I had a hard time reading the whole thing and I had to pause it a couple of times uh, his shirtless you know most of the time when you have that it's very much of oh he just wants to show off his body <laughs> abs but in the context of the short film it makes perfect sense that he's taking his shirt off he's not trying to show his abs and awesome physique or anything they're showing the fact that he's got an artificial heart because it's very important to the storyline but it is a great excuse to show off some abs and let the ladies woo about it. Now this arm wrestling part, I didn't, I was like, okay, I don't know why this would judge how, you know, he's trying to figure out how good of a person he is that makes him worth 40 million instead of 10 million. I don't know how an arm wrestling competition would do that, but I can understand when they're arm wrestling, he takes the masks off. So it's really like, is he, I guess, is he willing to go the distance without the mask on? Does he have the heart for it? Uh, that part I can understand, but the arm wrestling part, I was like, okay. I mean, it's not bad. It's just more like, all right whatever <laughs> uh, I do like this mob this mob uh, boss this gangster boss he's very calm uh, he has an air of authority about him the actor does a very good job all of the acting in this was very good our lead actor him uh, not Nawa Zudin is in this which I really like him I think he's a great actor um, even the looks of like this kind of visual effect, very good for a short film, a low budget short film. Uh, very impressed with some of the visual effects in here. They kept things looking like futuristic, but still based in reality. Like we would still have trains, you know, we would still have uh, light rails, but we would also have kind of this updated architecture with computers on the walls uh, 
I think Nawa Zudin's outfit, you know, it's supposed to look realistic, but it's kind of like Star Trek in the way that it's not really functional. <laughs> um, I loved their talking back and forth. It was uh, kind of like a mental chess game. You know, they were kind of testing and feeling each other out. However, when they got near the end of their discussion, which I think may have been a little too long, but at the end of it, he pulls out a gun and just shoots him. Uh, I know why they did it. They needed to push the story along a little quicker so they can get on with the rest of it because they're already halfway through. However, it seemed very quick that he was going to pull a gun out. Almost like it's not really, there wasn't much motivation for him to do that. Uh, since they spent so much time with the, the, the interaction between the two characters, they could have escalated the anger a bit better so that it made more sense why he pulled out the gun because they didn't really escalate that anger they showed the crate down there moving which obviously had somebody in there but I don't see why our main character cared you know he's just there to sell oxygen other than that he doesn't really care because he showed that earlier you know he's doesn't really care about other people He's just trying to get his money and be able to take care of himself. So the motivation for him to pull out a gun and shoot him was thin. However, we found out later, after the fact, that that guy was an assassin and killed the actual person that he was supposed to be selling the oxygen to. And then there's a lady in the, in the crate, which was a, a great character. I like her as a character and the idea that she is a robot you know that she ends up flipping out and having to reset uh, you know at first you think she's a slave but you find out she was purchased because she's a robot but she thinks she's human that has very much of a Blade Runner kind of feel to it the, the whole thing has like a Blade Runner and uh, Johnny Mnemonic uh, feel to it, and I like that. Uh, Johnny Mnemonic kind of in the storyline, and uh, Blade Runner kind of in the sci-fi. Uh, but those are great movies to emulate, so I like that. And then the whole thing with the mob boss coming. The ending was a bit quick, but it made sense. It didn't feel rushed. The ending didn't feel rushed. It was just abrupt. And uh, I thought it was interesting that she's wearing a gas mask because she's a robot. But then after this, they explain it and say it's because she thinks she's human. So she would want to wear a, a gas mask because she thinks she's human. Realistically, she doesn't need it, though. But if she thinks she's human, she would put one on. And then at the end, they do, uh, you know, they go backwards. They go backwards in the thing, and you can see the TIE Fighters again. Uh, I was looking through there to see if I could see any other kinds of ships. But I see a lot of TIE Fighters, a bunch of different kinds of TIE Fighters from Star Wars, a little satellite dish. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that... That was, a, that was a great short film. I thought it was very well done. A couple of little problems, but nothing major. Just a really good sci-fi. Great job, guys. I really liked it. I'm excited that uh, they did a great sci-fi. <laughs> and I wanted to share it with you guys. So I've got a link to it in the description below. You should go and watch it. I think it deserves the attention. Uh, I know it's got a lot of views. People know about it. What was it? I think it was sitting at like 6 million views or something. But if you haven't seen it, go watch it. I think you'll like it.
comment below and let me know your thoughts on this short film. What did you like? What did you not like? What do you agree with me with? What do you disagree with me with? Keep it civil, civil uh, in the comments. If you're on VidMe, upvote this. Give me a follow and share it around. And if you're on YouTube, like, share, subscribe. Tell your friends. And I will see you in the next video.